So we might make a start. So if you'd like to you could press play on your playlist, just make sure it's off shuffle and just keep your mic on mute, please. With your towel or your block. Actually, we'll start in a comfortable seat. So just have your towel, your block close by. Find a comfortable seat if that's cross-legged or if you would like to be sitting on your knees today. Another option with your... Um, okay, just putting that music level where it. <sighs> so usually we start class with, with an intention. I'm not going to do that today, but I'd like us to take a different hand mudra today. So hand mudra is um, a position of the hand. So usually we take our hearts and our prayer pose. Uh, today we're going to take lotus pose. So the base of the hands come together, the pinkies touch and the thumbs touch and the rest of the hand, I think you can see that, is coming out wide. So it's like a lotus. Not too much pressure, it should be gentle. And the lotus is the hand mudra for the heart chakra. So today, while we're doing back bending, we're really working on opening up our heart space and hopefully leaving you feel a little bit lighter and a little bit more in love, whatever that means to you. So we start with our hand mudra, our lotus, we close our eyes over. And just begin taking a few deep breaths. As we start to turn your attention from your outer world to that inner space. Feel free to set an intention here. And while we move through today's practice, I'd like you to pay particular attention to that heart space. So your heart space runs just across the chest, just in between the belly and the throat. And each time we physically move that chest space open, we're inviting love. Continue your breath. Bow your head to your heart center. Inhale, lift your head, release the mudra. And we're just going to take a lie down. So if you've got a block, if you're using your block, if you have a towel or a blanket, we use your towel. And so we're lying down. So the towel or the blanket or the block is in between and just a little bit um, under your shoulder blade. So really opening up the heart space your feet flat on the ground, or if you'd like, extend all the way down. And arms, really, whatever feels comfortable for you. I like a cactus arm with my forearm facing up and my palms facing up. You take what feels good for you today. Close the eyes over. And let the body relax. Deep breath. And notice the chitta vritti or that chitta chatter of your mind. Begin to swirl around your head. And as we shift our focus back to our breath, we just let those thoughts go. Two more breaths here. Finding a safe space inside yourself. Exhale, we just lift up, remove the blanket, the towel, the block, whatever it is that you have. We're going to lie all the way down on our back. 
feet come together. I want you to just tuck your tailbone. So pull your uh, navel to your spine, tuck the tailbone so it's on the ground. We're going to lift the feet to the sky. Working to get our ankles in line with our hips. If they're not there yet, that's so fine. So wherever you meet, feet come together, knees together. Really draw that navel to spine. And we're just going to start taking a circular motion. So start to lower them down to the left, down to the ground, and over back up to the right. And back up. It's a nice, slow movement. If it's too strong for you, you just go up and down. And the the, the closer you get to the ground, the deeper the core workout is. So you meet yourself where you're at. Reverse your circle. Working to keep that tailbone connected to the earth. Arms are wherever help you the most. Starting to heat up that fire in our belly, our third chakra, our solar plexus, our sense of willpower. Meet back in center and take a few breaths here. Exhale, feet come to the ground. I'd like you to bring your heels close enough to your bottom that you can just scrape, just scrape the back of the heels with the tips of your middle finger. Feet are hip width distance apart. As we inhale, I want you to raise your hips and your arms to the sky. And arms go all the way back. So we're working into a bridge. And exhale back down, arms follow. And just move at your own pace. Inhale, raising the hips. And when you're in this um, bridge pose, imagine there's someone pressing on your knees and your knees are pushing towards your face. So instead of your knees going over your ankles, bring them closer to your chest and you might find your chest raises up just a little more. So a gentle back bend here. Moving with our breath. Creating flexibility in the shoulders. See if you can find your flow. yoga there's no particular end goal except to be that is here and now exhale releasing down to the ground knees come into the chest wrap your arms around the shins and just a gentle pressing them into your hips into your belly and again you might find a little bit of sharpness around your hip flexors and that's totally normal see if you can breathe into that space and let it go and exhale feet come to the ground we're going to inhale rise up arms come out forward I'm just going to shift my weight back for you. We're moving into Navasana. So here we're keeping our chest open, working not to round the shoulders over too much. Chest is open, arms reaching in front of you. I'm going to bring our feet in just a little. 
Our toes are now on the ground. We're gonna inhale, raise your left foot up and just straight back down, right foot up and straight back down. And if this is not feeling anything in the core, you lower your upper body just a little more. Inhale, up, exhale down. Really move at your own breath and just find what works for you. Keeping that beautiful straight spine and that lovely open chest. Two more on each side. Don't rush them. Navel to spine. And when you're finished, we sit all the way up. Beautiful feet. Our hip width distance apart, flat on the ground. We're just gonna bring them just a little closer than they were. We're gonna exhale, lower down. Just to the point where you begin to shrug your shoulders and straight back out, arms wide open. I'm gonna burn myself, so. <laughs> Exhale, straight back down and back up. And just continue with this, working to keep your feet on the ground. And as you come back up, really expand, opening that chest space. Two more. So we work our core to support our back. And when you finished your last one, ooh, we extend the legs forward, arms rise up and just fold forward. Here, it's just a releasing stretch, so whatever feels good to you. No need really to be touching your toes, but. Just folding forward. Exhale, release the hands. We're gonna turn over into our tabletop. Knee stacked under our hips. Wrist under shoulders. Tops of feet really pressing down as much as you can, working to spread the top of the feet onto the mat. Inhale, lower the belly, open up that heart space and your head shining it forward. Exhale, pressing the ass away, finding that back bend. And begin to move at your own pace with your breath. This is your practice. What feels right for me or what looks right to others may not be right for your own body. So that's part of what we gain from yoga practice, from our asana, is getting to know our own body as perfect as they are. Meet back in tabletop, left arm straight up, and now threading under the right, shoulder comes to the ground. You begin to thread our needle, press back up, and this time reach that right arm to the sky. Uh, left arm right and back down. Right arm comes to the sky. And under your left, pressing up, reaching up to the sky. And again, feel free to move through these. This is your first time flossing the needle, as they say. This is increasing mobility and flexibility in the spine. 
our beautiful spine that carries us everywhere. So by performing this action, we're loving our spine. And meeting back in tabletop once you've done an even amount, so enough of the same amount on each side. Big inhale. And exhale, open the mouth. That is a cleansing breath when we open the mouth. Otherwise, try and keep the mouth closed through the rest of practice. And we breathe through our nose. It keeps our energy inside our body. We're going to extend the left leg behind us, keeping the right hand on the ground. I think you might know where we're going. Into a tiger curl, bring that left knee all the way in to tap the elbow, press the earth away, finding that back bend. And exhale straight back out. And continue with that, keep that. Really see if you can squeeze that left knee all the way up, maybe into your armpit. Mine doesn't quite reach yet, but. <laughs> Perfect, one more of these. And I want you to keep that leg extended. Walk the hands just a little bit in front of the shoulders. Tuck that right toe. See if you can just lift up into your three-legged down dog. Pressing the mat away. Kick the square toes facing the ground. Bend that left knee. Open the hip up to the left side. Try not to lose the integrity of your ribs. Not the whole body is turning to the left. Just your lower body. Just your hips. Inhale that knee in to the elbow. Plant that left foot next to your left hand. Lower that back leg. Inhale, arms rise up. Anjaneyasana. Crescent lunge. Options here. You can bring your arms behind your back, grabbing opposite elbows, and just opening up the heart space. Really breathe in, and each inhale, expand the heart a little bigger. If you'd like, interlace your hands at the base of your spine and extend it down that back side. And just hold it here. See if you can sink a little deeper into that front leg, opening up the right hip while the chest begins to open to the sky. Engage the core, bringing you back to center. Arms rise up, tuck that back foot. We're going to straighten that front leg, half forward fold. Hmm. Toes pulling towards your Nose <laughs> towards your face, opening up that hamstring. Mm, walk your hands forward, weight in that front leg now. Lift the back leg, front leg comes back to meet the back. We're in a high plank, hold it here. Working to get the heels above the balls of the feet. Option if it's too strong, just lower your knees, untuck your toes. Find what you need today. Extend. I want you to bring both your feet together at the back of the mat and just roll them over to the left side, peeling the right side open and up to the sky. Side plank, your feet are active as if we're stepping on something. Press the earth away and reach into the sky. Option here to drop the bottom leg 
using it as stability. Still finding length from our right foot to the crown of our head. Find your breath. Welcome the sweat. <laughs> Exhale. Back to center. Good job, you guys. Pressing up into down dog. And just pedal out the feet. Lowering the knees to the ground on your next exhale. Hands come back onto your shoulders, finding your tabletop. Extend the right leg behind you. Moving into our tiger curls. Inhale, knee comes to elbow or to armpit, wherever you can get it. Exhale, back out. Continue this. Really focus on finding that, pressing the earth away, finding your cat pose. Just two more like this. Once you finish your two, walk the hands forward just a little, tuck that back leg. See if you can lift all the way up into your three-legged dog. Take a moment, find your breath. Bend the right knee, open up your hip. Inhale, knee comes all the way to the elbow, planting that right foot next to your right hand, lower the back foot. Arms come up, Anjaneyasana. Hmm. Option, take your option here, grabbing opposite elbows, opening up that heart space, or hands into lace, and lower down that back leg. Connect to your breath. Your breath, your prana, your life force, without which we would not be. With each inhale, feel the chest expand a little further and exhale, sink a little deeper into the hip opener. Beautiful, exhale, hands come down, tuck that back toe, straighten the front leg, toes come towards your face, And if you're like me, you might need to wiggle that foot forward a little. Find your forward fold. Mm. Inhale, bringing the weight back into the front foot. Hands bring the front foot, finding our high plank. Again, option, take your option if you need your knees on the ground. Working here, focus on the arms for a second. Try and wrap your outer arms in. So there's an internal rotation. So you come together at the back of the mat. I'm going to drop them over to the right. Left arm extends to the sky. Active legs, active feet. One straight line from your heel to the crown of your head. Exhale back to center. Lower the knees. We're going to lower all the way down to child's pose. If your head does not reach the mat, that's fine. Taking a few deep inhales here and exhale. <laughs> Close the eyes over if that's what you need. Inhale, lifting back up, 
Walking the hands forward, tuck the toes back into your down dog. And you just pedal the feet. Inhale, look to your hands, bend your knees. And we're just gonna step all the way up to our hands, keeping your hands connected to the earth. Hmm. Exhale, forward fold, feet a hip width distance apart. Working to get our belly on our thigh. Bend your knees if you need to, you guys. I want you to feel what it is to fold forward. You might find the weight begin to shift into the top of your toes. Just grip onto the mat. Inhaling, halfway lift, flattening that spine, straightening those legs, arms can come to shins or knees, wherever you need. And exhale, forward fold, bend the knees again if you need. Option to grab either elbow here, ragdoll, just rocking from side to side. And exhale, let the hands go. Inhale, gonna rise up slowly, very slowly. Vertebra by vertebra. As you reach the top, arms come all the way out wide and up to the sky. Engage the core, lift the thigh bones. Exhale, hands come to heart center. Beautiful, deep inhale here, and we're gonna take a cleansing breath, open the mouth. Mmm. We're gonna move into our first sun A. Inhale, arms rise up to the sky. And exhale, forward fold. Bending the knees where you need. Inhale, halfway lift. Mm. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the hands. Step back to high plank. Press the earth away. Find your plank. I'm just gonna stay here for just a minute. Not a whole minute. <laughs> Bring that navel to the spine. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Bring the elbows close towards you as we lower down for three, two, one. That's your chaturanga, good job. Untuck the toes. Mm. Bring your hands together either side of your ribs, magnetize the elbows together. Plant the tops of the feet down. And I'd like you to imagine there's a string on the crown of your head. Someone's going to pull it up and forward as you lift your chest. And this is cobra pose. Magnetize those elbows. See if you can engage the core. See if you can lift your hands just a little bit off the mat. And back down. Beautiful. Pressing up into up dog. Thighs come off the ground. Exhale, shifting the weight all the way back into your down dog. Three breaths here. Find your stillness. Exhale, shifting the weight back forward into your high plank. Keep that core engaged. We're gonna take our left arm and lower it down onto your forearm. And then your right will follow. So your elbows are under your shoulders. Hands are hip width, uh, shoulder width distance apart. Exhale, drop the belly, untuck the toes. Sphinx pose is shining the heart forward. And as you sit here, sphinx, with your hands and your arms, you're pulling the mat towards your body while your feet are really pressed down. Engage the core and see if you can open that chest space just a little more. Have a look at your, or feel, sorry, of your traps and see if your shoulders are coming up into your ears. If they are, roll the shoulders back and down, keeping our neck and our ears free. 
Exhale, lower down. Hands come to where your elbows just were. So the hands are in line with your elbows. Magnetize the elbows together. You can sit your head on the ground for a second if you can see me. I'd like you to engage your core. So take a moment to tuck that belly button all the way to the back of the spine. See if they can touch. The tailbone might shift down a little. So you might feel actually a bit of space now between your stomach and the mat. Hands come just to the outer lower edges of your ribs and your elbows magnetized together. Imagine that string on the crown of your head and we're gonna shift the weight up and forward. Cobra pose, keep that belly engaged and that helps us not dump into our lower back. We want even distribution all the way up our back so it becomes one even curve. Hold this here. Lower your shoulders, keep the shoulder blades away from your ears. Exhale, lowering down, taking a breath. And so back bends are beautiful because while they open up our heart space, they also give you the chance to dig as deep as you'd like. So as you magnetize those elbows, you'll feel your shoulder blades squeezing together. And it's up to you how deep you go. Inhale, here we go again. Navel to spine, lifting the chest. And here, Extend the feet, they're active, but they're on the ground. Option to lift the hands off the mat and see if you can just keep that lift in the upper chest. Perfect. Exhale, lowering down, lifting all the way up back into our down dog. Just for two breaths here, feel free to pedal out. Take a few breaths. Exhale, shifting the weight forward again, finding our high plank. Holding it here as we just fire up the core again to make sure it can support us in our back bend. Exhale, lower down for three, two, one, beautiful. Head comes to the ground, set up for cobra. Elbows magnetized together, navel to spine, inhale, lifting up. Option here, extend the hands all the way down either side of you, reaching towards your feet. Make sure that core is engaged. Hold it here. And exhale, lower down. Funny how a seemingly simple movement can really get you going. And we're gonna go one more time. So if you want to start with the hands either by your ribs or extending behind you, your choice. Inhale, engaging the core, lifting up, reaching back behind you. Option again here, lift the feet as well. Locust pose. Reach your hands as far back as you can, really squeezing the shoulder blades together, almost so that your hands can touch. Another option, hands intertwine at the base of the spine, pressing back towards your feet. Open that heart space, shine your heart forward. Two more breaths here, keep it active. Use your feet, reach behind you, exhale, lowering down. Beautiful, take a moment. Find your center. And we're going to try something a little different. I'd like you to bend your feet in towards your bum. You'll have a little bit more range of motion here if you choose to keep your knees a little 
bit apart. I like to keep them together, but it's your choice. And we're gonna bring our hands to the outer edges, actually, sorry, the inner edges of, no, that's, that's sorry, incorrect, outer edges <laughs> of your ankle, not your feet. It just helps you get a little deeper. So you can hear, see we've got the cobra in the top half of our chest already. I want you to flex your feet as if you're standing on a wall and same action as we were doing in locust, as in cobra, but this time we're gonna press the feet back to the back of the room and lift us up a little higher. Bow pose. Engage the feet, pull in with your arms. Shine your heart forward, breathe. Engage the core. See with your next exhale, so you can press a little further. And exhale, slowly release back down to the ground. Take a big inhale and exhale with your mouth open. Just cleansing your breath. Pressing the earth away. Moving back into child's pose. And take a moment to observe just where your breath is sitting. Without judgment, I'm not trying to change it, just observe it. Inhale, lifting back onto all fours. We're going to make our way onto our back. Hmm. Beautiful. Hands come down at either side of you. Just roll the shoulder blades a little bit under your chest so your heart space is a little bit open. Feet are going to come back up to where they were at the beginning of class. Ankles over your heels, uh, over your hips if you can. We're going to reach our arms up to the sky as well. Arms are in line with our shoulders. As we, now this might take a bit of coordination, but you'll get it eventually. Exhale, right leg lowers and left, uh, left arm lowers to the ground. Inhale, rise back up. Swap sides, left leg lowers, right arm lowers. And back up, really slow controlled movement. Again, working to keep, you move at your own pace. Working to keep arms. Um, your navel to your spine, your lower back's on the ground. And take a moment here while you move through this to think about love, what it means to you, where you find it. and activities that you do and people that you meet. Most importantly, with yourself. Just two more on each side. Make sure you do the full two. Back together, legs up, bring them into your chest, bringing your knees back and your arms around. Big inhale into your belly, see if you can lift your thighs a little higher with each inhale. 
and exhale, you sink them a little deeper in your hips. Feel free to massage the lower back by just rolling from side to side. Exhale, lowering the legs, but the feet actually gonna come to the ground. And we're gonna set up how we did before. So I'd like you to be able to, your feet are close enough to you that you can just scrape them with the tops of your fingers. And your middle finger. Feet are hip width distance apart, so they're not together here. Hands, let's keep them in the ground as they are, palms down. Inhale, I want you to tuck that tailbone down and the spine is come, the navel drawing into the spine. So you've got that core engaged. You're gonna exhale, press away the earth, coming up into a bridge. Again here, working to get the knees in line with the ankles. And again, to do that, if I was with you, Pressing, placing the hands gently on, my, on your knees, I'll be pressing them towards your face. So as if there's a wall that your feet are hitting. And exhale, lower down, just slowly. Perfect, this time we're gonna take a variation. So we'll go again, set up the stomach, tuck that tailbone, navel to spine. Inhale, lifting the hips up, hands come together at the base of the spine. Roll the shoulder blades under your chest a little more and press the earth away with your arms. Really drawing the lower body towards your face. Bridge pose. Inhale to your ribs. Inhale to your belly. And exhale, lowering down for three, two, one. Now stay here. You might feel the need to bring your knees into your chest. Don't do that just yet. Our spine is quite delicate and strong. <laughs> if we go into a back bend, we don't want to immediately flex it the other way by bringing the knees into the chest. So we just stabilize it down on the ground. We're going to do that one more time. I'm going to give you the option here, if you'd like, to move into wheel. If, it's, if backbending seems to come naturally to you, you might enjoy trying wheel to see how you go. Otherwise, just stay in your bridge. We're setting up the same way. Just scrape the edges of your heel. Tuck the navel to the spine. I'm going to um, press the earth away, lift the hips. Option here to keep those fingers interlaced at the base of the spine, helping yourself to roll the shoulders under the chest. <laughs> Otherwise, if you'd like to take wheel, hands come with fingers pointing, facing your toes uh, on either side of your ear, elbows in line with each other. So when we press up, I, don't, I want you to try to keep your elbows magnetized together like in Cobra. So press up this to the top of your head. You should, shouldn't feel too difficult here. And if you'd like to keep going, pressing up with your arm, finding the wheel. Even bend between the back, so the lower back and the upper back. And if you'd like to walk your feet in just a little, find a deeper stretch. And exhale as we come back down, crown of head to the ground. Then we flip the head back onto me. Hands come down either side. Slowly lower down for three, two, one. Good work, you guys. Rest here for a sec. Now you can bring the knees into your chest. Ooh, just give them a nice big hug. Feel free to rock back and forth. Exhale, we're going to open the legs up, 
hands come to the outer edges of your feet. Knees are working their way to your elbow, um, into your armpits. Feet are flexed. Happy baby. Pull your feet further towards you to deepen that stretch in the groin. Connect back with your breath. This week I've been learning about something called the yamas. Yoga has eight limbs to it. Asana or poses, which is what we do in class, is just one of those eight limbs. The very first limb is called yamas. And it's the way in which we move through the outer world. First part of yamas is ahimsa. If I have that wrong, I'll correct, I'll correct it in the comments later, but ahimsa, non-violence. And exhale, release the feet. Just the right leg to the ground, left leg is gonna cross over the right, just, sorry, ankle to knee. I'm gonna bring the right leg in, hands interlace under the thigh, or if you'd like, over the shin. Figure four stretching out that left hamstring and glute. Find your breath again. And ahimsa, non-violence, is the act of non-violence to yourself, to others, to animal kingdom, the plant kingdom. It very much ties into heart opening for me. For if we let go of violence, can we find a deeper love? And exhale, release the foot. I'm going to swap sides. Left foot comes to the ground, right ankle over left knee, and bring that left leg in towards your chest. Okay, if it stretches too much for you, feel free to keep that left foot on the ground. And just find as much as you need. And so if you take nothing away from today's class, oh, I hope you take something. <laughs> so if you could just take one thing, let it be to perform acts of self-love and let go of self-violence. Sounds simple. There are little moments in every day where we can choose between love and violence or pain or fear. So can you choose love? Exhale, lowering. Right leg to the ground, left leg, we're going to make the shin parallel to the ground and we're going to roll that left leg over the right into our supine twist, arms come out wide or cactus, up to you. If they're out wide, palms face down, head rolls over to the left. Feel free to bring your right arm to the outer edge of your left knee, thigh, and just deepen the twist. And so just as in our threading the needle at the beginning of class, we twist the spine to increase its mobility and hopefully allow us the pleasure of standing and moving more freely for longer in our life. So, Exhale, back to centre, lower the left leg, bring the right one up, shin parallel to the ground. Right leg rolls over the left. Oh, I've got a nice back crack there. <laughs> and head drops to the right. Sometimes, even while we're stretching, 
some of our muscles might be tense in the way that the part of the muscle that we're trying to stretch is tense. So see if there's any point in your back or your glutes that's just really holding on. See if you can breathe into that space and just let go. And that little part of your body some love. And exhale, rolling back to center. As we move into Shavasana, feel free if you have a blanket or a cloth or something nearby, you'd like to cover your eyes, you can do that. Feet come out wherever is comfortable for you, hands either side of your body, palms facing up. I like to tuck my shoulder blades under my chest just a little to open that heart space again. Take a deep, deep inhale and exhale through your mouth. Letting go, take a few of those, there's no one listening. Just letting go of that fire that was building in your body as we find liquid and water. We soften and we cool down. Shavasana, preparing us for the last stage of life. We learn here how to surrender, we practice non-attachment, letting go, and finding that deep point in our body that's free of the chatter of our mind. See if you can switch that attention from the room that you're in into what I call the mind's eye. Sink into the earth below. And feel your chest fill with light. Sending yourself love.
And so we slowly begin to deepen our breath. Bringing your attention back into the room that you're in. Can you wiggle your fingers and your toes. Just gentle movement. And roll over, ideally to the right, but if there's a side that feels better for you, feel free to use your arm like a pillow. Legs might bend, eyes still closed over. And as you begin to wake up a little, make your way to a comfortable seat. Try and keeping your eyes closed. And without looking, can you find your lotus? Mudra once again. Base of palms together, pinkies and thumbs together. Opening and accepting and receiving love. And while I think traditionally, particularly in Western society, love is something that others give to you. But can we begin to shift that idea and that love, the deepest, most true, longest relationship of love that you will have in your life is just with yourself. So if we're feeling lack of love, Try and find ways that you can give it to yourself. If you're feeling an abundance of love, still give it to yourself and share it with us. Revisit that intention that you set at the beginning of class. And thank yourself for practicing today. You know, it's not easy to make time, but it's just so, so worthy of your time. And thank you for practicing with me and each other, you guys. Namaste.